Mrs. Gandhi, she comes back. Uh, she might have learnt her lessons, she might have. So you see what happens is Indian economy was also evolving. What you could not do earlier, you could do now. Sixth five year plan, the lady comes back and decides. Till then you had depended upon the trickle down effect. You remember in 1971 elections, the clarion call was Garibi Hatao. Garibi Hatao. Garibi Hatao. Don't depend upon trickle down. Somebody will start a factory that will help a few people. They won't be poor. No, no, no. That is trickle down effect. We are so many people, trickles can't help us. So she said, not trickle down. Sixth five year plan, she said, direct attack on poverty. Set up an industry and for a few people, poverty will be abolished. It is no longer the strategy of the government. Let growth do whatever it does to abolish poverty. But we have to confront poverty head on, for which direct attack. And in the sixth five year plan, as you will see in the graphic, all these integrated rural development program, today this program is called National Rural Livelihoods Mission Ajivika. And then you also had National Rural Employment Program, DART plus Rural Landless Employment Guarantee Program. This and this together is what you understand today as Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Program. These two. Initially they became JRY, Jawhar Rojgar Yojana, and from there they have become this. That's the evolution. Because when you implement a scheme, when you design a scheme, implement it, you will learn. Best in that, you know, earlier they were giving loan only to one person. I won't return the loan. But if there is a self-help group, there will be pressure. Oh, if you don't give, we will all be blacklisted and all that. So self-help group based bank credit became the norm after operationalizing credit being given to individuals. So you learn. And then there was, you know, today, uh, the other day, our Prime Minister said Vishwakarma. Training rural youth for self-employment. Trisem it is called. Training rural youth for self-employment. The entire skilled mission, Vishwakarma, whatever, this. And you have so many schemes for women. Where did they get the trigger from? Development of women and children in rural areas, Dwakra. This was the genesis of empowering women towards self-employment, etc. They were all given birth during the sixth five-year plan. And what else happened in sixth five-year plan? When she came back, she nationalized again, number one. And some political things have happened. I don't want to go into that. So these are the schemes that she took up. Also, IMF loan. Again, those guys had raised the petrol price. We were purposely and predominantly dependent on import of petrol. You had to earn foreign currency. You didn't open up the economy. So, we needed foreign currency. So, where did you go? Private market you can't go because they are like money lenders. Go to the International Monetary Fund, ask them, Sir, we are having difficulty paying for our imports. We also got some loans, sir, we are not able to repay. We need some foreign currency. We are ready to reform so that we can export and get some FDI. Not right away, in course of time. Do please give us, sir, a few one billion, whatever. So that is what she did. 
In 1981-82, she went to the IMF, took loan from IMF to resolve the balance of payments difficulties. That is, get some foreign currency to do your external operation, paying for your import, servicing your loan and all. That's what we did, 1981-82. And, and of course, the assassination and the five-year plan closes. First time, you exceeded. 5% rate of growth of economy. How could you do all this? Why didn't you do all this earlier? That's because green revolution, revenues and taxes, India became, you know, the journey to prosperity started. Government's revenues were more comfortable. And with that, government spent on the, uh, you know, directly attacking the vulnerabilities, etc. Also remember one thing. If you did not do, Naxalites were camping in the rural areas. Unless you develop, unless you democratize, you can't take them by the root. Naxalites were everywhere those days. Today in the Hindu, our home minister says we'll stamp them out in two years, etc. That's okay. If it is done, everyone will applaud. But the point is, you had to develop people so that they don't fall prey to Naxalism. There was an urgency. And so, all these schemes were taken up. I want the graphic to be displayed. Sixth five-year plan. Sixth five-year plan. C-I-M-F. All this, all this, this and this, Mahatma Gandhi, this skilling, women, you know, entrepreneurship and so on, self-employment, direct assault on poverty, trickle-down effect, let the growth do what it does. We don't expect growth to all alone lift the country up. We have to augment that, supplement that with all these schemes aimed at abolition, alleviation of poverty. You can't abolish poverty overnight, alleviate, reduce the misery of poverty. So all this I have told you already three, four times. Another look at this. It's a part of your brain. So let's move on. Yeah. Seventh five year plan. Seventh five year plan. Seventh. 85-90. Remember, she, uh, Mrs. Gandhi was assassinated because she was fishing around in politics. Unnecessary politics. Self-ruining politics. She did. And she had to pay, uh, you know, with her own life. So, uh, <laughs> dynastic politics, uh, you had... Uh, uh, 85 to 90, you know, to understand the thrust of the seventh five-year plan, you have to understand what's happening in the world. USSR, <coughs> Gorbachev comes to power, they were questioning communism, they were opening up. China already struck a millennial deal with the West and Japan, come into my country, I'm all for capitalism. So, what are you doing with all your uh, government controls, license permit, Raj? But see, in India, 50s, 60s, 70s, and up to 85, 50s, 60s, for 35 years, you had orchestrated all this. Government control over the economy, public sector. For you to selectively dismantle that, People have to accept. You can't take people for granted. 
Today you tell them socialism, tomorrow you tell them privatization, expect them to accept you. No, you have to create a, you know, a debate has to be generated and people have to be communicated the need to reorient the economic model. That took a lot of time, but in the process, the seventh five-year plan saw, you know, long-term fiscal policy. Long-term fiscal policy. LTFP. See, the whole thing is, till that time, this is 86, 1986, 86, you know, I want investors. When will I get investors? When they know what is my policy. If I have a policy this year, another policy next year, another policy the year next, there is no consistency, everything is reversible, arbitrary, you don't like me so the policy is X, you like somebody else, policy is Y, favoritism, nepotism have a policy, long-term tax policy, investment policy, export policy, import policy, public sector policy, rupee policy. So have a policy for a long term because you don't want people to invest 5 rupees. You want them to invest 500 million rupees. So, give them a long-term policy, they will calculate what are the costs and benefits of coming to the country, ask them what should we do further. So, first time in the history of independent India, there is a long-term fiscal policy where the government expressed, declared its intent to have consistent, predictable, transparent tax policy. Long term, not annual, long term. So people are inspired. And then soon after that, in 88, you know what you had? You had three year exim policy, export import. You want me to export? You want me to export? Give me the right policy. I don't know what you're going to do next year and the year next, two day subsidy. Tomorrow no subsidy, today tax concession, tomorrow no. How do I plan? Am I a tourist or an investor? So you want me to invest long term, you better give me the policy. So three year exim policy was given. And then uh, you know what happened was, there was talk about public sector requires competition, BHEL. BHEL can dominate the world, ONGC can dominate the world, IOC can dominate the world if they are made to compete at the right time for right reasons. Uh, so public sector reforms and then the uh, government thought license permit Raj has gone too far and it has suppressed the initiative, economic initiative. We need to liberalize, allow the private uh, investment to come within the country and therefore selectively we will dismantle this, selectively, gradually we will dismantle the license permit Raj. We will have licenses, we will have permits, but it will not be a permit Raj uh, under which bureaucratization, red tape and all. So the initiation of the necessity to reform the economy towards markets, that is what one had seen during the seventh five-year plan. Times of India, the Hindu, Hindu of course was opposing all this, Times of India, Economic Times, you know, uh, other papers. 
seventh pi v of land. That is the historical context. And also that side, I told you what's happening in USSR, perestroika, glasnost, openness, restructuring. And then I told you what happened in uh, China. Uh, you know, in China they opened up. This side in the UK, Margaret Thatcher was there. America, you had Ronald Reagan. Both of them were neoliberals and they were saying, give it over to the market. Markets can do very well. Why should the government be there at all? You know, there's a slogan, the business of government is not business or something. Slogans, they're all slogans. So slogans were generated to justify government giving over a lot of production function, distribution function to the market. So that was the seventh five-year plan. After the seventh five-year plan, you had a crisis. You know, political instability. Vishwanath Pratap Singh. After that, Chandrasekhar. While they were the symbols of uncertainty, instability in India, within India, Saddam Hussein occupies Kuwait. Oil prices shoot up because of the uncertainty and speculation. We already had a problem servicing our dollar loans. And when oil prices shoot up, it will take us so much more to buy the oil. Our forex reserves were depleting. Tourists were not coming because of the uh, you know, geopolitics. So foreign currency earnings were less. The dollar deposits of the NRIs, they were withdrawing because, after all, if I don't withdraw today, the India won't have any foreign currency over tomorrow. So that's what is happening in Pakistan right now. I've read a, a report. Report means news report. Where it is said all your Nestle, these companies operating in Pakistan, they were selling. Nestle was selling. But the profit it made, it wants to convert that into dollar, Swiss franc and take it home. That they are not able to do because Pakistan doesn't have foreign currency. So NRIs who put dollars as deposits because the interest rate was very high, they quickly withdrew because India doesn't have foreign currency. If I don't withdraw now, I'll have nothing to withdraw tomorrow. They start. NRI, out. Tourists, not there. Oil, very high. Forex reserves, dwindling. We hardly had forex reserves, you know, one fortnight or one month. So this is the reason why the uh, external financial crisis took place. You call that a classical BOP, balance of payments. Very simple. Balance of payments is India, world. So many financial economic transactions take place. Some get us money, for some we have to pay. For example, I export country, India exports, we get foreign currency. To import, we need foreign currency. If this is less than this, you have to borrow or you have to invite foreign direct investment. With $100, somebody comes into my country to, to make steel. Another $100, uh, foreign portfolio investor, he comes to buy certain financial assets in my country. Most, both of them are welcome. Tourists are welcome. NRI deposits are welcome. Exports are welcome. But then I also need to, uh, you know, earn foreign currency in such a way that I'll be able to finance my imports. Imports are about $800 billion, exports are about 450. My people outside the country are sending me dollars, remittances, $100 billion. My service export, you know, net, net, you are short of foreign currency. You are short of it. That is, we are not in a crisis, we got 580 something. Those days you were not earning foreign currency. Crises took place, 
depleted your foreign currency, you could not import, and you borrowed from outside, you shouldn't have, but you did. You borrowed from outside, they were asking for interest, you didn't have the foreign currency. Part of the, you know, I don't want to blame Indian government for that. I would rather blame the geopolitics and oil economics and all that. And don't say NRIs were unpatriotic. It's hard-earned money, what is patriotic? So, uh, we had a problem, BOP, balance of payments. Payments means earnings and payments, the sheet, the balance sheet, where you have what you pay to the world, what you earn from the world, that's a balance sheet. And if it's in deficit, you are in problem. You are not always in problem if it's in deficit. America will always have a deficit, but that's America. Uh, we had a problem, and that was in 1990 and 91. You had no government, you almost had no government, you had two prime ministers, and as if that's bad enough, isn't bad enough, one prime minister got assassinated, ex-prime minister. Prime minister, gone. Another prime minister, gone. Another prime minister, gone. Going, going. And, you know, ex-prime minister, he was assassinated, assassinated, blown to pieces, you know, shatters uh, your uh, mind. So that's what happened. With so many problems, the silver lining was, you know, uh, P. V. Narasimhaf comes to power, Dr. Singh becomes the finance minister, and together they have a plan to bail us out. That is called Rao Manmohan model. That was in 91. Very simple neoliberal model. See, whatever you may say, the crux of it is, what are you doing? Opening the economy inside to private sector, outside to foreign investment, opening the economy for exports and imports, opening the economy for stock market investments also. And uh, this is what is known as a liberal model. What did Narsimha Rao say? You know, Narsimha Rao said, Reliance can make a lot of things. Let them make. Why should I make? The money that I have, I'll put up schools. Reliance won't put up a school in rural areas. So, I will do public goods and merit goods. And they will do the commercial goods and so on. So, there is a separation of responsibility here. Distribution of, division of responsibility. That's a classical liberal model. <coughs> classical. Though you can decorate it in more respectable language, but that's handing it over to the market. Why not? China did it, Russia did it, and everyone else did it, so you can also do it. So let the markets take over this and that. So that is the Rao Manmohan model for which a graphic is waiting to be seen. Uh, sixth also, unless we have already seen, we have seen this, yeah, we have seen. Rao Manmohan model. The most, you know, we should have done this in 1965, in which case we could have beaten China. 25 years we have lost. 25 years we have lost. 25 years. So it's not a lost decade. It is the loss of a quarter of a century. 25 years with so many young people, all that. China opened up in 82. We could have opened up in 65. China was doing nothing when we were developing, when Mahalanobis model, all that Nehru's genius was guiding the country. What was Mao doing? Nothing, suspecting people suppressing people, attacking people, all that nonsense he was doing while we were developing. So, you know, we had a huge historical lead, but then we freighted it out.
So this, we will, you know, the whole of economy is this. We'll be talking of excellent sector liberalization, we'll be talking of competition, public sector policy, we'll be talking about everything else, forex reserves, balance of payments, FDI, FII, all the exports, each one is a chapter. It's just that in 91 we had an extensive process of opening up the economic reforms and uh, this is a snapshot of what is coming, the contents page. This is the contents page, Rao Manmohan model. Anything associated with this? One more? No, okay. So, eight to five years, I have how much more time left? One hour? Half an hour. Okay. So, we can uh, complete last century. Up to 2000, we can go, 1919. See, so, the eight five year plan, Rao Manmohan model is equal to eight to five year plan. 92, 97 and you already have noticed that between 90 and 92 we did not launch a five year plan because of the uncertainty, largely globally driven uncertainty. So, annual plan. And you know, Dr. Singh came one year before, but he didn't launch the eight five year plan. He said, let us understand what's going on, get a grip on what's going on. Let's see what's the solution here. It is, no one is running away. So we'll start the five year plan as soon as possible. That was the next year. So you see, what did he do? That was a crisis by any other name. What did he do? You know, you see Dr. Manmohan Singh, you are inspired, you know? like seeing a good cook in kitchen, full confidence. So Dr. Singh has been given the job of repair, you know, bring the economy back. Let's go forward, globalize, catch up with the world and all that. So what did he do? He takes over, that itself is a reform. Having taken over, one of the first things he does, there are two words here I want you to know. Stabilization. Structural reform. See, stabilization is what? We needed foreign currency. We had to service some external loans. We had to import certain essentials. And uh, so you got the foreign currency from IMF and you are stable. That doesn't mean you're not going to go into a crisis tomorrow, the day after, the day next. For the time being, you are stable. For example, anyone has a sugar problem, he'll get a chakar, you know. When you have a chakar, you take a little bit of sugar. Stabilization. But for you never, ever, again to get the chakar, you have to do some structural reforms. What are they? Regular yoga, pranayama, all that you do. And you will never uh, uh, come back into that. India also, okay, just take this billion, two billion, three billion and sort it out. You are stable, nobody is knocking on your door. Now how do you ensure that the crisis is history and in future you will never have another crisis like that? How do you ensure? Reform, reform. I had 20 marks out of 100. You know, that was a shocker. How, how, how am I going to never ever again have that? Reform. You know, struggle, after all, nobody has it uh, falling into the lap. Struggle, struggle, struggle. So what's your struggle? Open up the economy. What are you so possessive about your closeness? Open it up. Reliance is ready. 
when they were not ready you closed idra they are ready let them come invest foreign all these people so when you op what is the meaning of structural reforms i remember discussing it in class 1 day 1 itself when we uh, you know understood it as the existing structure of indian economy is one of insulation close to the world no competition no market forces significantly so this is your structure reform it open up to the world allow the private sector introduce competition gradually de reserve the public sector more areas for the private sector and rupee was you were fixing a rate arbitrarily because you know you had to ensure cheap imports not to inflate your economy but that sort of a shortcut you can't have go into the market free up the rupee run your economy well ensure that rupee is stable you cannot fix it and feel that you have achieved stability no leave it in the market let it find its value run your economy well so that it doesn't go down ensure it doesn't get too strong either exports and all that so free it up free it up and then uh, the convertibility that is for investors foreign investors uh, you know make the rupee convertible what does it mean making the rupee convertible allowing foreign investment at the rupee value at the market rate two things convertibility are two things rupee at the market rate forex and liberally allow the foreign investor to come into the country at market rate rupee earlier you were saying rupee is 16 rupees per dollar they would not come neither did you allow them to come nor did you allow the rupee to have a market value so you shut both the doors for the convertibility convertibility as i told you two dimensions one allowing the foreign investor to come into the country number one he will do so only if the rupee is freed up and finds a value in the market so freedom to come freedom to go for the foreign investor and for the indian investor also at the market rate of the rupee that's very crucial market rate of the rupee otherwise your policy won't succeed because who will come into your country if you are giving 40 rupees per dollar i'm getting my hard earned dollar you are saying take 40 rupees come into my country invest in my country all no give me 83 rupees whatever the market says i will come allowing me to come is x allowing me to come at the market rate is y x and y together is convertibility you're free to convert your currency into mine and vice versa at the market rate for all these purposes what are the purposes all this invest in my country make in india invest in my stock market whatever you want to do you do and uh, you are allowed to uh, do all that at the market that is a convertibility freedom to convert the foreign currency into domestic currency and vice versa for uh, Uh, you know extend current account capital account that's a separate chapter let's not get into that so dr singh opened up the economy and that is uh, what he did in 91 and then when you open up the economy the model of planning will acquire a new name indicative planning indicative See what were you doing till 1991? I'm the government. You are the private sector. I was telling you, hundred rupees will go into making steel. Eighty rupees I'm putting in. States are putting in ten. Ten rupee room is there. You can put it for steel, Tata Steel, Jindal, whatever. So I'm dictating to you. I'm directing to you. I'm making it imperative for you. I will drive the vehicle. You will ride piggyback on me. if i allow you now i'm asking you 100 rupees me 50 rupees you bring or 55 rupees you bring my 45 i'll 
bring and uh, because my priority is the public goods and not steel and cement. So come, invest in my country. Uh, Tata, invest, invest, come, invest. I'm indicating, you know, I can't direct you because I want you to chip in with more than 50. I'm 40, you are 60. So how can I direct you? How can I dictate to you? I can only tell you, see, come, this is my export policy, my import policy, tax policy, largely, you know, there's a monthly policy structure, and then public sector policy, competition policy, these are my policies. I want you to invest in pharmaceuticals. I want you to invest on a strategic basis, 15 years, 20 years. Why? India has an advantage there. You have all. Are you okay or can I do more for you? Then you will tell me, sir, the tax policy, keep it fixed for 10 years. Don't tamper with it. Okay. Sir, the labor policy, I want to invest. Tomorrow I don't make profit. I want to get out. Allow me the exit policy. Okay. That we can discuss. I won't say okay. We will see. Okay. Whatever we can do, we'll do. It will take time. We are a democratic country. So you and I... Private sector and the government will sit down. I have to give you a conducive policy. Only then you will invest. Gone are the days when I can twist your arm and get you to work. No. 91 onwards, indicative. Whereby the government gives information of the public policy in multiple fields to the prospective investors and they are consulted and together they create the ambience for, you know, investment and growth. That is the indicative planning model and that comes into force beginning from the 8-5 year plan, indicative planning. Eight five year plan onwards. This plan does well because you've done all this reforms. Banking sector reform, stock market reform, lot of these reforms were done. Then comes the ninth five year plan. Nine. In which again you had political uncertainty. Not only political uncertainty, you know, again. One Prime Minister, then another Prime Minister, Prime Minister changes, another Prime Minister, and the government collapses and a new government comes into force, and then that Prime Minister goes, yeah, within one year he goes, Kargil happens, and uh, uh, before you wake up from Kargil, 9-11 happens, so a lot of uncertainty and that and a lot of things they did. The government did a lot of things. Today in the Hindu, what did you read? TCS buyback. Who allowed the buyback? Yashwan Sinha when he was a finance minister in the government of the NDA 98 onwards. Buyback was allowed. When did Infosys go to NASDAQ to list? That was in 1999 during this five year plan. 50 years of independence, uh, which is, uh, you know, 50 years of uh, the Republic. Your IRDP became transformed into Swarna Jayanti Gram Swarojgar Yojana in 1999-2000. Yashwan Sena. This plan. Infi goes to NASDAQ. Kargil happens. Buyback law is made. Swarnajayanti Gram Swarojgar Yojana, 9-11, and then your Highway Development Program, Golden Quadrilateral, National Highway Development Project, Pradhanamantri Gram Sadak Yojana, all of them, all of them, tremendous infrastructure. Uh, the seed was sown only in the ninth five-year plan. But then, you know, these policies don't pay back immediately. And therefore, the rate of growth was hardly some 5.5 something. Compare that to this 8-5 year plan which grew 6 plus. This was 5 plus. 
then comes a new perception of India as an uh, emerging leading power global economy. That was 10th five-year plan. 10th five-year plan, 2002-2007. As you know, you know the government changes, but you see, in 2000, uh, two, three, there was a severe drought, rains were not there, agriculture fell. Since agriculture has direct and indirect role in the economy, economy fell, this was the drought. And the other day we talked about base effect. So you fell like this to 4.2. Next year, normal rates, euros. So this government which is in power for a while now, they keep saying we handed over an economy to the other uh, people. The economy was growing at 8 point something in the year in which the power shifted. That's wrong. Why? The 8 something was a result of the base effect. If you did not fall, you counting from this point, you should have counted from there. So the 8 was an exaggeration due to base effect. It did well, 6, 5 something. So whatever it is, the 10th 5 year plan. Let's see what happened. 10th 5 year plan. Fiscal Responsibility Budget Management Act comes into the picture. Starts on a drought year. FRBM, Mahatma Gandhi, National Rural Employment, Mahatma Gandhi comes later, National Rural Employment Guarantee Act, Right to Information, ASHA, National Rural Health Mission, all these things happen during the 10th five-year plan. And the world was growing like you can't believe. India also piggybacked. We also grew somewhere around little less than 8%. Genuine growth, not statistical, uh, you know, makeup, no. Genuine growth, you know, youngsters were happy. World was looking up to India as the next China, genuine growth, infrastructure, etc. Et and uh, 11th five year plan starts well. You know, 7 to 12 starts well. But you had the Lehman brothers going bankrupt, banks were lending. They were not getting the money back and they crash along with the banks, insurance companies, the whole economy crashes, a lot of the world also crashes and so we could not export and stuff, we didn't have foreign direct investment, we didn't have stock market, all that crashed and so you had in this 11th five year plan you started out, 7-8 was good, 8-9 Lehman Brothers. After that, of course, you did the standard Keynesian stuff, borrow and spend. The question also came in the exam. Stimulus. And incidentally, the 11th five-year plan did well. If you look up the textbook, you will notice that during the 11th five-year plan, we grew past 8%. That was the 11th five-year plan because we spent a lot of money. Expenditure GDP. And then 12th five-year plan, first time in 12th five-year plan, on the cover page of the five-year plan, you had the target of sustainable, inclusive, more in, faster, more inclusive, sustainable, uh, you know, economy. Growth. Sustainability. And then the uh, uh, government changes, 2014. They didn't like all the Soviet-style planning, so they abolished the planning commission, replaced it with Niti Aayog, and so on and so forth. So you will see some more graphics now.
Neeti not yet. I have not discussed. This we have done. This also we have done. Rav and all that. Sixth we have done. So Neeti Ayog, I want to discuss separately. I have some time left for Niti Ayog. 15 minutes. 15 minutes, okay, okay. So, you know, what is Niti Ayog? Replaces Planning Commission. Planning Commission, you know, it wasn't a constitutional body. It's not set up by an act of the parliament. Cabinet met, union cabinet, decided, let's float a Planning Commission. So, you float it. Similarly, Niti Ayog also, not constitutional, not statutory, decision of the cabinet. See, you know very well, we had a discussion, Planning Commission, MDC. There are two separate bodies. Though Planning Commission is a part of the NDC, NDC comes and goes, Planning Commission stays. It's a permanent standing body. And what did the government in 2015 decide? Let's scrap this. NDC they have not touched, whether it's there or not we don't know, they have not abolished it. Even NDC was set up by a decision of the union cabinet, not constitutional, not statutory. They have created a Niti Ayog, this is Niti Ayog, in which this is a standing body, the think tank what they call organizational framework, the hub. And this is the governing council, where the prime minister, the prime minister is here. Prime minister heads the entire Niti Ayog, in which there is a hub, think tank, and governing council. Governing council is entirely political. So, This is the governing council and this is the think tank. Call it office, call it organizational framework, uh, call it whatever. This is the think tank. Governing council is political. Prime minister, cabinet ministers, special invitee ministers, chief ministers, LG, administrators, all of them. Uh, prime minister heads both. This is headed by Vice Chairman, not Deputy Chairperson. Planning Commission was headed by uh, PM and next is Deputy Chairperson, here Vice Chairperson. And then you got some permanent members, you got part-time members. Part-time members are who? Let us say you are a research director, Indian Agriculture Research Institute. You will be asked, you be a part-time member, Agriculture. Somebody, Council Medical Research Health. Part-time member, experts, they are all here. It's an ongoing body. This meets, no uh, frequency specified. They meet, last year they met. The seventh meeting of the governing council. So what do you do? Why did you scrap the planning commission, replace it with Niti Ayog? Very simple. That was Soviet style planning number one. Planning Commission was responsible for centralization number two. Planning Commission was also allocating money. Point number three. States were feeling subordinated, point number four. And uh, we should also, you know this, Niti Aayog has a provision for governing council can set up a regional council. Can set up, never set up. Can set up a regional council. See, Delhi, Punjab, Haryana, the UP, Western UP, all of them are uh, burning stubble and uh, polluting this part, set up a regional council, let them address the problem collectively. You can do it, but you never did it. Similarly, water sharing. Southern states, let them come together. Zonal councils are there, but they are not entirely planning oriented. So, regional councils can be set up. Cooperative federalism can be facilitated. 
you are a think tank to advise the government on multiple aspects of development and growth, social development and health. Basically, cooperative federalism. How do you facilitate cooperative federalism? No allocative function. Earlier, planning commission was saying, give 10 rupees for health. Give. Give means give. 15 for education. 10 rupees for empowerment, etc. Now, Niti Aayog has no allocative role. That's done by the, you know, budget and the independently and finance ministry, all that. So, no allocative role for the Niti Aayog. Cooperative federalism number two, development-oriented number three, not only cooperative federalism, but also to facilitate competitive federalism. How? Take quality of school education index or take aspirational districts or you take aspirational blocks or you take innovation index. So what's the game here? Simple. I want, you know, center and states, we can cooperate for development. For example, Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak or, you know, I fund it, I'll implement it and the grams are all states. Or take any other example, stamping out the Naxalites, I will uh, modernize the police, police is your police, I will give the money, I'll modernize and together we'll ensure there is no extremism. Cooperative, you and I cooperate. Competitive. See, this is uh, the aspirational districts, the progress or innovation index or export preparation index, whatever, many indices you will see. Where is Gujarat? Where is Tamil Nadu? Where is Bihar? Where is Jharkhand? Where is uh, uh, XYZ? See this. Compete. Beat each other up. This is the index with the help of which you come to know the best practices across the states. Follow those best practices and compete with each other and ensure the development takes place quickly. Compete. You and I compete. Your states and I'm center. We compete. You are the states. You compete. Startup policy. Let's compete. Old pension, new pension, innovation, let's compete. So, competitive federalism is where the units of federalism compete for adoption of best practices in governance and development. Niti Aayog facilitates it. You will see a list of the indices, wonderful indices. So, this is how Niti Aayog is different. You will see a graphic also. Dharmendraji, we have a graphic of comparison also. Planning Commission and Niti Aayog. You will see two, three graphics now. Structure and functions. Seventh meeting as a sample, I have included it in this column because you should know what are the focal areas when the governing council meets. Crop diversification, national education, new education policy, etc. Urban governance. You know, if you have these examples at your command, they add value to your answer. Regional councils are not formed. Somewhere here it's there, maybe the next graphic. They are not formed, they are allowed. There is room for that, but they are not, fall. they are not formed yet. Market dominated. You want to use the word Soviet, you use. But avoid the word Soviet and all that. You can say planning commission centralized. And now that market forces are occupied, playing a larger role, centralized planning becomes more of an impediment than a solution. We have a shorter table on the same. See, Niti Aayog. Somewhere you will get regional councils. Not yet set up. They are all summary of what we have in our own book. Our book is crunched for, you know, uh, quicker grasp and all that.
again seventh meeting last year it took place i don't think it will take place again the country is too hot now for governing council the comparison temporary of course temporary if they are set up at all they have never been set up so but the fact remains they are temporary the comparison both of them are non constitutional both of them are non statutory both of them are set up by a decision of the cabinet both of them are involved in economic development social development both of them have and is a participation of center and the states however planning commission had allocative role planning commission was centralizing planning commission didn't have a facility for regional council planning commission was not facilitating a competitive cooperative federalism while this does it you are expected to say i don't find any difference between planning commission and i don't find any difference except that here you call deputy chairperson there you call vice chairperson everything is same except allocative even in allocation the planning commission's recommendations were only advisory they were not binding so there is no difference but examiner expects you to say that there are differences while there are convergences and the niti scores and you'll see a lovely deadly graphic after this the indices we have na no? yeah everyone writes cooperative federalism you write competitive federalism also see this is cooperative this is cooperative competitive with the help of indices you know the niti aayog developmental rankings in all this they are shown in a delta form what is delta form you have 80% i have 20% next month from 20% i made it to 30% delta ranking shows me jumping by 50% you went from 80 to 85 delta ranking of yours will be 5 on 80 is nothing 10 on 20 is 50% so delta is incremental marginal progress and when that is shown it's a huge uh, you know form of encouragement for those you know who are uh, making the leap this is a set of indices one graphic captures everything rest all is your ability to uh, debate argue multi dimensional poverty we'll have an occasion to talk of it school quality health composite water management export preparedness this is to come up it's not there innovation of course is there who knows one or two new indices also may come you know while we are uh, preparing we'll catch up so that's the deal for today tomorrow we will see what's going on day after we are back fiscal policy it requires a little more of attention fiscal policy we'll handle that get ready with fiscal policy you know i requested but my request has been shot down it seems it seems you have an exam and also maybe you require some you know a time to plan out